So this is the council chair determination to hold electronic meetings without anchor location. In accordance with Utah code 5232074, I have determined that conducting meetings of the Ogden City Council with an anchor location presents a substantial risk to the health and safety of those who may be present due to the infectious nature and potentially dangerous health effects of contracting the COVID-19 virus. This determination is based on the following. The Center for Disease Control and Prevention, or the CDC, has determined that COVID-19 is easily spread between or among people who are in close contact with each other through airborne respiratory droplets and may be spread by people who are non-symptomatic. The state of Utah has developed the COVID-19 transmission index through a collaborative effort among state and local health officials, elected officials, the hospital industry, and business leaders. As of November 1st, 2020, Weber County was in the high transmission category, limiting group gatherings to 10 people or less. Based on the foregoing, all public meetings, including work sessions and meetings of the Redevelopment Agency, will be held electronically through November 30th, 2020. Information on how to connect to the electronic public meetings will be posted on each agenda. The public may comment during the electronic meeting and public hearings on agenda items designated for input or during the general public comment period. Written public comments may also be submitted through the following electronic options. Telephonic message at 801-629-8158, public comment submission form at ogdencity.com forward slash public input, or email at citycouncil at ogdencity.com. This statement is issued or was issued and became effective November 2nd, 2020. Thanks again with your, for your patience, letting me read that. And also please let the record reflect that all council members are present with the exception of council member Lopez who's asked to be excused. First up, uh, Vice Chair Blair has offered to do the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you, Chair Chaburka. Yeah, I would ask that all council members and those joining us would please rise with me and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Thank you. And please join us in a moment of silence. Okay, so the first item on the agenda, well, the third item, I should say, is, is a recognition that we are actually postponing until we can meet these folks in person. It was for Boots and Bunkers. So we will invite them back um, once we're able to do that, hopefully in the new year. We have approval of minutes. Um, the regular minutes of May 12th and May 19th, 2020, Council next item to the joint work session of April 14th and the work session of July 14th, if you don't mind. Thank you, Chair. I've reviewed all of those minutes and found them to be accurate to my recollection. Thank you. And the joint work session of June 9th and the work session of July 7th, 2020, Council Member White. Yes, Chair Jabrika, I've reviewed those and found them to be accurate to the best of my rec recollection. Thank you. And the work session of June 2nd, the closed session of June 9th, and regular and closed sessions of July 21st, 2020, Council Member Stevens. Yes, Chair, they're correct. And finally, the joint work session of May 12th, regular meeting of June 2nd, and the special meeting of June 9th, 2020, Council Member Heyer. Yes, Chair Chubaka, I've reviewed those and found them to be accurate to the best of my recollection and would make a motion that we approve the minutes listed in the agenda. I second it. Thank you. We have a motion by Councilmember Heyer and a second by Councilmember Stevens to approve the minutes. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you all for reading all those. It sounds like we did a little catch up. Um, we have uh, an item co for common consent, the Christmas Village Committee. So we're considering the reappointments of some folks, um, Cindy Wayloff, uh, Jacob Chadwick, Nikki Lavelle, Brenda Verup, and Craig Balick, and the appointments of Nick Morris and Diana 
Meiser, I hope I'm saying that correctly, to the Christmas Village Committee. This is a voice, voice vote, or I guess we need a motion first. Would anybody like to propose a motion? Chair, I'd make a motion that we approve the common consent agenda as is listed. Second. second. I have a motion by Council Member Heyer and a second by Council Member White. This is a voice vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Awesome. We really appreciate all of that service. Thank you all so much. Next item up is a public hearing um, the, for the fiscal year 2021 to 2025 capital improvement plan amendment. And we're inviting um, Great Montgomery and some other staff that may present as well. Anyone? Greg, I, this is Brady. Um, Hi, you want Brady. me to take it? Yes. Okay. Oh, so sorry, Brady. Brady Heard, nope, Planning good. Manager, please, you're up. You're good. So good evening, um, Madam Chair and members of the committee, or sorry, member, members of the council and uh, Mark Johnson. Mm -hmm. Doesn't look like the mayor's on this evening. So good evening. Hopefully everybody's doing well and staying safe out there. So yeah, um, what we are discussing now is the FY 21 and 25 uh, capital improvement plan amendment. So what this is that we're putting forth is uh, consideration and recommendation before the council um, to consider the capital improvement plan and amendment, which would include proposed, um, proposed project W001 for the replacement of out, outdated water meters. Um, so with that, to kind of give some, some background on that and overview um, with this amendment, Ogden City uh, Culinary Water System is one of the largest in the state. We, we have a little over uh, 24,000 meters in the ground as it is. Um, and of recent, uh, we've implemented in, in the last several years, um, a fixed base metering system, which allows meters to be read remotely. Um, and this project um, is, is essential to this, um, to this system being um, able to function properly, if you will. And um, why, why, why so? Um, basically replacing old Badger meters will, with new Neptune meters will help increase the number of meters that can be read remotely. Um, in addition to that, it will help increase meter reading efficiency, accuracy, and improve the information that is communicated to the residents. So it'll be more interactive um, and yeah. Um, and then also of recent in the last several years, um, we've continually focused on mainly smaller meters and badger meters needing to be replaced. Um, and so what this, this plan or this proposal is being, would be, more or less focused at is some of the bigger meters um, that are that are out there. Um, um, so the, yeah, and in, in, with with all the work that we've done in the last several years, um, this would be adding to those in more years and continuing to build on um, being able to read remotely. Um, and it's as, why why it's so essential is obviously as time progresses meters oftentimes will wear down as part of the process and wear and tear and will get less and less accurate and um, especially with the badger meters they um, they kind of have a another system that they're on which causes it a little bit causes it a little bit e or a little bit harder for other our personnel to read more so and is more involved um, and so this will help us get on that fixed base system um, so with that, let's see, I'm just trying to go over a few other notes. So up to this point, um, so since last November to this November, we've replaced around 237 Badger meters. And then um, currently there's, there's approximately about 274 Badger meters that need to be replaced. Like I had mentioned a little bit earlier is these meters, these 274 that are out there, they'll mostly be in the realm of two inch to eight inch meters. Um, and those 
are definitely more higher in price, if you will. And so that's more or less why we're proposing to put this forward to help us get those um, on this fixed base system. Um, over the last several years, um, we've it, it ranges as to how many we're able to replace from year to year. Um, but over the last several years, I mean, we, it ranges from anywhere from 300 to 700, depending on how many um, smaller meters we replace, because they're they're a little bit cheaper versus the high, the bigger meters obviously cost a little bit more. And we're kind of coming down to the point where we just got to get some of these bigger ones replaced. Um, and then, yes, this this um, requires an amendment a budget amendment. Um, I, don't, I don't know if, Lisa, do you have anything that you want to mention on any of the budget amendment from finance's standpoint at, at this point? I don't know. If... No, this is part of the $66 million budget amendment and the, the three-year capital improvement plan for water. So, so this will be adopted with the utility bond funds. Okay. So, I mean, that's that's pretty much everything that I have. Um, I guess if you have any questions or concerns, I'm open to try and field those now if, if you want to discuss them. You bet. Thanks so much, Brady. Any questions or comments? Maybe um, just for the public's knowledge, you know, um, I guess I'm curious why this particular item is pulled out um, to talk about versus, you know, talking about that whole package. Um, why does the council have to approve this at this time? How I've understood it, and Lisa and anybody else, Justin, you can always chime in too. How I've understood it was where these will be used towards purchasing supplies as maintenance in a sense. That's more or less why they've got to be pulled out from like, it's not like your traditional CIP of where we'd go out to contract and utilize a contractor per se versus utilizing them for supplies for maintenance, if you will. So that's how I've understood it. So Lisa or Justin. Okay. Yeah, so the action before council that Brady is addressing is actually to ad appropriate or to adopt uh, this project into the current year CIP plan so that when we fund this six million, this million dollars to this program, um, it's an approved CIP. Great, thank you. Mm -hmm. The other the other projects are already in the CIP. This is the one that wasn't. Mm -hmm. Correct. Thank you. Well, I don't see any other questions or comments. Um, thanks so much for your report, Brady. Thank you. I'd be happy to entertain any motions. Well, it's a public hearing, so should we have uh, some time for some people to speak? <laughs> I have to look under my headings accordingly. Would um, Erica, are you helping to manage the meeting tonight? Or Brandon, if you wouldn't mind telling people how they might comment? Yes, I'm covering for Brandon tonight, so I'll be happy to do that. I thought that um, was great. To participate in tonight's public hearing, um, first of all, you have to be joining us via Zoom. Uh, you can raise your hand by clicking on the raise uh, hand button on the bottom of your screen. Um, and if you're joining us via telephone, uh, you can dial star nine to raise your hand. And just a reminder, this is uh, um, comments for this item specifically. Perfect, thank you. I see your green box lighting up, Council Member Heyer. <laughs> I was just noticing there aren't any hands going up, and I was going to make a motion to close the public hearing. Thank you. Second. Thank you. There's a motion by Council Member Heyer, second by Council Member White to close the public hearing. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. I didn't mean to put you on the spot there. I just saw the green box. Oh, that's OK. Um, it's, yeah, it's hard to tell. Who wants to speak? Okay. Um, I'm happy to make the motion on that if you'd like. Thank you. 
Uh, Chair, I would make a motion concerning proposed ordinance 2020-52 that we adopt that ordinance. Second. I have a motion by council member Heyer and a second by vice chair Blair to adopt the proposed ordinance 2020-52. This is a roll call vote. Council member Heyer. Aye. Council member Nadolski. Aye. Council member Stevens. Aye. Council member White. Aye. Vice chair Blair. Aye. Chair Chaburka. Hi, and that passes. Thank you. Um, next up, we have a report from the Planning Commission about the stormwater low impact development standards. Welcome back, Greg. Sorry about that. <clears throat> so, as you mentioned, this is a recommendation coming from the Planning Commission to make a, amendments to the zoning ordinance. And this all has to do with what is called low impact design or LIDs. Uh, the state has issued the requirement for cities to adopt uh, provisions regarding the low impact design and our present zoning ordinance uh, did not support some of those concepts. And so it's necessary that we do an amendment uh, to the ordinance to reflect these, these changes. Now, what a low impact design is, is a system that allows uh, by natural means to process uh, stormwater, create infiltration, evaporation, reuse the stormwater uh, so that we improve the quality of the water uh, that exists in the community. Uh, because as you recall, many of the uh, commercials years ago, it all goes downstream. And so we want to make sure the water quality uh, is such that the that our rivers and streams are are clean. And by being conscientious about how we treat stormwater runoff, we can improve those water quality systems. So as I mentioned, this is a new state requirement. It's required that uh, new development must manage the 80th percentile rainstorm. Um, and the revisions we're talking about are things that can help create that green infrastructure and follow the principles that the state has mandated. One of the questions that we spoke about in the work session last time was that this is applicable to all new development greater than an acre, or if it's less than an acre, to, to pieces that as they're combined become an acre or larger. Also, if it's a redevelopment project, it, uh, if the redevelopment project is increasing the amount of impervious surface by 10%, they also would be subject to these standards. Now, there are some revisions that say if things are not practical, then the LID cannot, would not be required. For example, a high water table or types of soil or steep slope or things that affect runoff to begin with and won't allow water to normally percolate through into the soil. Um, those things are understood, and so those are exempt from the LID. Uh, but generally, we try to look at some of those areas where we can apply it, uh, whether it be our storm detention basins, green roofs, other types of things. So the proposed changes take place in a couple areas. One is in the definition section of the zoning ordinance, just defining what it is, that it's a natural process of landscaping. Uh, the ordinance talks about different things that we do besides the definition. It talks about design parking lot. How can you use your landscaped islands instead of being barriers or, or bumper areas, create them into areas to, to harvest the rain and allow the water to percolate. So examples of some LID concepts are, we just put these up to give you an idea of different approaches. Uh, one example is what they call the wet swell. And these are either the, the shallow wetland areas. We, we've created some in the city. Um, we have some detention basins that are, are much like this. Uh, some of the things we've created as we look at uh, collecting water off the roads and then allow that to sit in those landscaped areas and then overflows are then taken down into the storm drain after the vegetation that can, can sift in the, the water. A dry swell 
where we have, uh, and I apologize, the lights just went off in the room, so uh, it won't turn on unless I go move the switch. So I'll just, I'll keep going. Um, it makes you look very spooky and movie-like. <laughs> That's not good, spooky as it is. Um, but allow just water to run off into these areas and let the grass or the, the vegetation uh, do the filtration. Uh, rain gardens where actually the water is directed here, it stays there and uh, creates a different type of habitat and then filters down into a, a system. Um, so it gives you some different examples of things that would meet the LID. So we use that and define those in the ordinances. Here's some provisions that you can use to meet this criteria. And then besides the definitions and the general standards, we apply them to the, our parking ordinance and to the general landscape, encourage people to do these types of things. So the planning commission reviewed this and they recommended uh, by a 9-0 vote to approve these changes uh, to, uh, to allow the low impact designs to be a consideration. And really it, it makes sense when we are better, better utilizing our land to have these types of design standards in place rather than focusing away from uh, being conscious of how we manage water. Thanks so much, Greg. Yeah, I love it. Any questions or comments for Greg? Uh, Chair, I have one question for Greg. Yes. Uh, when, our, when developers come into the city, do we review the, the landscaping and, and what we're talking about tonight uh, with these landscapers? We do. When we, when we have site plans come in and uh, we always look at their landscape plans and we'll, we'll often suggest to them some things they may do to help uh, better utilize their, their space and the types of plant materials they use. Uh, with this, we also will now be looking to, to, to try to direct them to, to do this as a more cost-effective way uh, to create their stormwater detention. And these revisions help them to be able to do that now rather than say, oh, the ordinance doesn't allow you to do that. Okay. So we review the, uh, the ordinance that we're looking at with these developers then, is that correct? Okay. Any other questions or comments? I'm not seeing any at this time. Thanks so much for your presentation, Greg. Okay. So this time we'd love to receive input from the public if anybody would like to make comment about this particular item. I don't think there's anybody new on the call. So yeah, you would just raise your hand in the Zoom call and then we will allow you to speak. Not seeing any hands raised. Um, so I'd be happy to entertain any motions unless there's more discussion. Chair, I'd make a motion then that uh, we adopt ordinance 2020-55. Thank you. Second. Thank you. We have a motion by council member Heyer and a second by council member White um, to adopt or This is also a roll call vote. Council member Nadolski. Aye. Council member Stevens. Aye. Council member White. Aye. Council member Heyer. Aye. Vice chair Blair. Aye. Chair Chaburka? Aye, and that passes. Thank you all. And now we're gonna have time for public comments because if um, 
you all have noticed we do have a closed executive session on the agenda for the final item. So we're going to do public comments now and then comments from the mayor and council members before we go into that. So at this time, it's an opportunity to speak on any item and we just ask that you um, state your name for the record and keep your comments to three minutes. Not seeing any hands raised, so I'm hopeful that everybody's understanding how to do that. Yep, I'm not seeing any hands raised, so I guess we'll move on to comments from the mayor. And Chair, oh. I'm sorry, It could we have um, maybe Johnson try to to get on. I just am worried that I don't see anybody able to get on. So I just want to make sure that we're not having the same issue. Maybe if Randy's on or somebody from the city. Oh, Keith's raising his hand for us. Thanks, Keith. Thank you. I just it seemed weird that um, I know. I appreciate that. Thank you. Um, Heath, uh, maybe we'll allow Heath just to see if he, you can either lower your hand, Heath, or you can um, go ahead and keep your hand up and then we'll know you have a public comment. Looks like Heath does. You're now unmuted. Um, I think it's Heath Sato that has his hand raised. Do you see that also, Eric? Yeah, yeah, hold on one second. You bet. Sorry about that. Thanks, Council Member Wayne. Okay, Heath, now you're unmuted and you should be good to go. Okay, hi everybody. Hi Heath, sorry uh, about that if we missed your hand. No, it's, it's okay. I was having a little issues, but I'm not sure. Who it was? Um, anyways, um, Heath Sato, Ogden resident, um, perennial city council commenter. Um, I wanted to thank you, council member Chaburka, for sending me some of the helpful COVID related information after I sent out an email to the mayor and all the council members last week. Um, I've sent the mayor a couple of emails over the last month, but I haven't received any, even a confirmation receipt for them. Um, so I have yet to hear what the mayor's plan is um, to deal with the skyrocketing housing prices, or if he plans to. Um, I've only heard complaints from him that he's being called out for his lack of vision and action. I also wanted to say thank you to the city council for hearing my concerns regarding the pandemic almost three months ago and having the courage to do as much as they could by formally encouraging all citizens of Ogden to wear masks in public areas. Um, sadly, our leadership from the president to the governor down to the mayor have not felt a similar urge to protect lives by doing whatever they could until the governor ignored political pressure and finally, finally did the right thing this week. Um, here we are with full ICUs, spiking infection rates, and we've only just begun heading into a very long, dark winter um, because we acted like this would go away if we did almost nothing about it. And even though the deaths in our community are tra tragic, there's a wider issue of lingering health issues from COVID. Um, every case we stop now is potentially one less burden on our healthcare system down the road. Uh, just today, I saw a, a study published in The Lancet, a peer-reviewed medical journal, that 20% of people that have contracted COVID um, and survived are experiencing mental, mental illness issues, one in five people. With our numbers hovering near 3,000 new cases in Utah per day, that is potentially 600 more people experiencing mental illness in our state every single day, a state that already suffers from the fifth highest suicide rate in the nation. We're all racing rising homelessness in our area, so if you combine skyrocketing housing prices with potentially soaring mental illness in the state, it doesn't take much to imagine that we may be looking down the barrel of things getting much, much worse if we 
do nothing now. Um, the governor finally had the political courage to do something about the pandemic, but he's not doing enough about housing costs. I wonder if we will have to wait again until it was a crisis before we rely upon the state leadership to do something. We could have done more about this pandemic and we did not. We may be paying the price for those poor choices for a generation or more. I do hope lessons will be learned from this. And that's the time I needed for today. Thanks for listening and may you all be safe. Thanks, Nick. If there's anybody else that'd like to make any comments, you can raise your hand. Okay. Now it's Mayor Caldwell's turn. <laughs> Sorry about that. I'll, I'll just say with tomorrow being Veterans Day, I just want to respect all of those people that have given so much service and so much sacrifice to our ability to agree and disagree, which we see on most city council Tuesday nights. And I appreciate that. We have a tremendous amount of military support and people that have done amazing things in our community. And I just want to appreciate that and respect that and tell them how much we respect and admire what they've, what they've done. And I've, I've got a military family and it, it really matters to me. Veterans Day is a, a really important day and we thank and respect everybody that has been willing to go through that and to make those commitments to our community and to our country. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, any council member comments this evening? Chair, if I Oh yeah, council member White first and then council member Stevens. Chair, if I could make a, a quick comment. Um, you know, many of us were impacted by uh, a prominent uh, person in our community <clears throat> passing from COVID this past week. And, you know, I was a, a, awakened at, I know this is embarrassing, but I was awakened at 9, 8, or 9 p.m. when Gover Governor Herb Herbert sent out the emergency um, notice about the mask mandate. And I know that there are people on both sides that, you know, I have rights on the right side, I have rights on the left side, but man, I'm getting tired of it. Just wear a bleep and mask. It is a 70% less transmission between all of us. And let's get through this bad part. We're going into the Thanksgiving time. <laughs> Thanks, man. But just wear a mask. Gosh, I, I just, it, if it could just save one more person, if it could help as, as Heath had mentioned on mental health and all of the other things that are, we're gonna see down the road, I just wear a mask and um, let's get through this. Let's get through, through this together. I've said this from the beginning. Let's be vigilant. Let's do it. Wash our hands. Um, and thanks everybody for putting on your masks. I appreciate it. So that's all I have to say. I'm just, I, I, I can't say it any stronger than that. I'm tired of being in my basement. I, and I want to get out and play and be and have fun. And so if we all just wore our masks, we could do that. Okay, now your turn, Doug. <laughs> thank you. Um, uh, Chair, uh, I'd just like to thank Eric for step, uh, helping us out with our meeting tonight. It just shows the uh, talent and the expertise that we have in our, with, in our council staff. And I want to thank him for stepping in and doing that. Uh, also, I go along with the mayor when he mentioned Veterans Day. Uh, I'm very appreciative of those who are actually uh, that, uh, providing the, safe, the safety for us and everything. Uh, and so we have the opportunity to, don't they know uh, it's council night? I always think that when my phone's ringing, like, don't they know? Go ahead, sorry. 
anyway, it, it uh, this uh, gives us an opportunity to have the freedoms that we have in our country. Uh, we have the opportunity to vote, and that's uh, that's what the veterans are providing for us, the opportunity of doing that. Uh, also, I was uh, listening to the mandate that the governor said, and, uh, you know, we're I know, I understand that we all have rights and privileges, but wearing a mask is not that difficult. And, and it, this gives us an opportunity to share and, and to uh, appreciate and, and not spread this virus to other individuals. And, and I get that. I, I get that uh, we need to have our rights protected, but, but this is a health issue. And uh, we're at 20% at the present time. And that means one in five will can have the opportunity, we'll have the, uh, could contract this virus. And, and this is not a light statement to do that. Uh, so, you know, it, it's just a, 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 an item that we need to do and just to wear, the, to wear our mask. Uh, I also was around uh, uh, the Christmas village and they're starting to set that up. And I know the committee has a tough assignment this year because of COVID. And, but I appreciate their service in uh, trying to make uh, or present our Christmas village and, and make something happen for our Christmas season going. And the uh, best thing we could do is not only enjoy Christmas village, but also do our shopping in Ogden if we have an opportunity. Thank you. Any other comments? Well, I, oh, there's Councilmember Nadolski. I thought I saw you come on before. Did you have a comment? Yeah, I just wanted to support Marsha's comments and Doug's comments, but Marsha's quote specifically, um, I'd wear a bleeping mask. So. <laughs> Is that our new motto? No. Take a step further and, and don't be a bleep and bleep and wear a bleeping mask. I don't understand why people are so resistant to it. Um, people, are, people are sick and we're a community that thinks about one another and we serve one another. It's the same sentiment that brings us here tonight. Every one of us um, are in these positions because we love Ogden and we love to serve the people of Ogden. And I hope that sentiment carries through to our community. And, um, and thank you, Marsha, for using such candid words. Even though they were, even though I, mean, they were said, I know what you were thinking. <laughs> in other places, there would be much, yeah, broader yeah. statement. Um, any other comments? I don't know if we have a bleep tool. We'll have to ask Eric and Brandon about that, but <laughs> a two second delay so they can bleep us. Well, thanks, everybody. I echo uh, every sentiment that's been said so far, uh, honor the veterans. And um, obviously, I don't work in the front lines in healthcare, but I see uh, every day lots of really intense. Um, and life-changing impacts from this situation. And um, yeah, I mean, I'm, I am so tired of meeting people on the screen as well, but we are so lucky. I mean, I think sometimes if we also think about um, just the great uh, privilege that we all have to be able to access things this way. And, you know, most of us have a pretty warm home and food, you know, and those kinds of things too. So I try to focus on those positives to get me through as well. And I also wanted to point out, along with Doug's sentiment around shopping local, that it's us, it's Ogden Restaurant Week, but it's the whole month this month. So those of you that can get out and support our local restaurants, you can order online, you can go pick up, um, and there are some other dining options too. So make sure you're out there supporting our local restaurants because that helps support our community as well. Thank you. So now I believe we um, need someone, if somebody would like to make a motion to go into the closed executive session. Chair, I would make a motion that we uh, adjourn into closed executive session for one of the items listed. Thank you. Second. I have a motion by council member Heyer and a second by council member Adolski to adjourn into a closed executive session. And I think I mentioned this before that we will adjourn after that, um, just for, so the public knows. And this is a roll call vote.
Councilmember Stevens. Aye. Councilmember White. Aye. Councilmember Heyer. Aye. Councilmember Nadolski. Aye. Vice Chair Blair. Aye. Chair Chaburka. Aye. And that passes. Thank you, everyone. So maybe we'll wait a moment uh, to so everybody can let us know we're in closed executive session. That would be great.